Yes Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I'm sailing away. We we uh we have a new. I'm gonna get you a copyright strike. <laughs> we have a new addition to uh the show. Everybody gets a soundboard. <laughs> oh well, your soundboard is weak. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I could yeah. add stuff if I know how to. <laughs> We're also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everybody. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm just fine. All right, then. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And look there. I think I see a Torterra. Here, fine, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Mm, yes. Funny I didn't enough, have my morning coffee, uh, so that's why I'm a terrible singer right now. Mm. Funny enough, you're from Canada and she's also from Canada, so it works. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> why, why? Is that not true? A little. She sings good. <laughs> I ain't denying that. <laughs> oh boy. Anywho, uh, in this episode, we are going to review My Little Pony Equestria Girl Spring Breakdown. In this special, Rain <coughs> 7 spend spring break aboard a yacht. But Rainbow Dash believe equestrian magic is on the loose. So before we head into the review, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, it's kind of funny. After Equestria Girls kind of separated itself from Friendship's Magic, where it was really an independent story... Now it's actually doubling down on on getting in touch with Equestria and having a little pony feature amongst the humans. So we're mixed feelings on that. I'm always happy for more ponies, but at the same time, you know, you got to be your own thing. I mean, Equestria girls, what are you doing? I, and meanwhile, oh, yeah, and this is the most irresponsible cruise in the world. No wonder the girls probably got on a discount. It's a death trap on the seas. I, I agree with that one. It feels like okay, let's let's put inexperienced crew members and let's hope the ship sinks so we can collect the insurance money. <laughs> sure seems that way. <laughs> Jacob, what about you? Well, speaking of shipping, let's first address the elephant in the room because all that's happened in the Royal Coaster of Friendship that we reviewed last time, it's all gone. I mean, they mentioned the events take place, but that's about it. Um, I, I won't say that. I mean, if, um, if you, you know what, I'm going to hold my tongue and try to remember if I can uh, remember what I was about to say. Anything else? Uh, well, yeah, pretty much what Silver said earlier. The the series <coughs> that was apparently trying to distance itself from its origin, but now it's starting to put in uh, things that were put into the show later down the line. And well, I'm gonna have a little learn or uh, a little uh, rant about that when we get to that part. Mm, okay, Jacob. Sorry, um, Tara. What about you, my friend? I'm actually also in the same boat, because it's like, you know, you have one side of the story and then another one, now it's like you're trying to combine them together, and I'm also going to say my full opinions at the end as well, but as for right now, it's like, it's meh. Mm, really now? Okay. Okay, so um, as for me, this um, special, this Sequestrago special, is... Very entertaining. I, I like where things are going and um, Rainbow Dash as the foil for the show is kind of grading. <laughs> uh, I guess we jump into it when we jump into it. But yeah, it, it's all okay. But I, I, mm, it, it, I, I feel grading things. So anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this course, uh, special posturing and do so. <clears throat> Hello and welcome back. So we start off the special with, well, our heroes on a boat. <laughs> uh, 
uh, who who did that? You know, I'll never know. Anywho, with our lead on a boat, and they're relaxing, they're having a good time. Pinkie Pie's being Pinkie Pie, and we see uh, we see all of them uh, um, having a wonderful time, except for Applejack, who is seasick, and uh, from from what I understand, this is not. Uh, this is the brain and the body not kind of communicating and not having that equilibrium where this is this this is not supposed to kind of thing i um I'm trying to remember stuff, but yeah, let's just say that uh mind and body are not working together. She forgot her sea lies at home yeah yeah true true you experience this right silver what sea sickness yeah. No, I I don't get seasick. Oh, that's good. Because from uh, from what I heard, if you do get seasick, look at the horizon, look at that, because that's the only non-moving thing. And your brain kind of, like, accepts the fact that I will not vomit. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> so. No, if my, uh, if my stomach is saying, hey, this, this has got to go, my mind is like, okay, <laughs> we're at, we're at the disposal. Oh no! Have at it! Oh no! But that's as far as I'll go with that detail. <laughs> you don't know. But anywho, uh, we we see the girls like I mentioned before having a good time, and it's all thanks to Twilight, who planned everything to for them to get on the trip. And just going back a few specials, isn't this the one special where them and the uh? Other uh, school, what was it? Uh, Cantalot? Crystal, Crystal, Crystal yeah, Prep? Crystal Prep. Uh, weren't they the one fighting over this um, vacation and whatnot? I don't think they were fighting over a vacation. I think so, but... I mean, at one time, the I believe they were going to be trying to get money to help uh, Camp Everfree. But, it, but they turned it into a vacation. This may be a completely different cruise, however. Mm, because I, I, I'm not sure if because fan fiction or uh, canon, but they kind of work together to kind of. This is where I'm a bit confused because I remember Crystal Prep wanting to go on a boating vacation, and somehow them recruiting the Rainbooms to play, uh, to play for them. On the ship, or uh, I feel it. I I feel like that's the uh, what you call this one of the resolutions or one of the specials, but I can't remember. <clears throat> well, no, the I forget what the ending of the uh, uh, the dance off really feels like. They split the victory money, but <clears throat> even then, they still probably had to go for the cheaper. Uh, cruise because I swear what we're about to get on this cruise would never pass in real life. <laughs> you shall. You shall. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is more likely than you think. <laughs> but anywho uh, we see everyone having a good time thanking Twilight and Rainbow Dash comes in and saying thanks Twilight because you know how to pick a climactic setting and everybody's like wait what? Can you just imagine a uh, sea monster on uh, the boat blasting fire lasers and whatnot, and we pony up? Uh, sorry, they, they still don't know what there's um, what they're calling. Uh, Sunset wants to say pony up, uh, others say power up. I don't know, but they, they want to go super saiyan and uh, defeat the monster, and the monster becomes their friend and whatnot. And everybody's like. Wait, what? No, we just want a normal vacation. No, we, we just want to relax. Come on, Rainbow, stop, stop that. And Rainbow points out one of the things that um, we fight monsters on a regular basis to save the world, and we're kind of superheroes. Ain't that right? And Twilight just says, Nah, we ain't heroes. Anyway, we, we, we came here to relax, uh, have some R&R, and everybody goes their separate ways to do whatever they want. <clears throat> so, 
So doing whatever they want, we go with Pinky. And there's a buffet, a dessert buffet of all you can eat. And we see a lot of desserts, this and that. And one of the thing that uh, Pinky sees is the triple layer bun cake, bun cake, something like that, which is said to be impossible, but somehow uh, one of the chefs managed to make it. And uh, the chef wants to offer Pinky a slice until Rainbow Dash tackles her and the cake goes to waste. And I'm here thinking, wait, what? what? Rainbow Dash, what? Why? I, 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 I don't know. What, what? And the end result, her getting pissed off and kicking out both Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie. And I'm here like, wait, what, what did Pinkie do? She's innocent. What do you guys think? She's in cahoots with her. Guilty by association. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh no. I must still. But um what do you guys think so far? Like I, I think this is a good point to us at this point. Um let's go for Jacob. Well so far it's okay, but it's kind of irritating as well. Uh Rainbow's so obsessed with uh, playing the hero that she's basically making it hard for everybody else. Alright. Um, Terra, Terra, sorry, anything more? Uh, it's not really much to say. It's like you already know how things are going to happen the moment Rainbow Dash is finding an excuse or a way to be like, hey, you know, this would be a good setting. And then she ruins Piggy Pie's uh, moment to get the Bun King. It's like, yeah, you, you already know this is going. Then Rainbow Dash is going to ruin everyone else's day. Everyone's going to be upset. And I feel like we've, th- we had an episode of this before. Don't remember which one, but it's just basically a repeat. And you already know what's going to happen. Hmm. All right. Um... Silva? Well, let's see. First of all, we have the heavy exposition dialogue, which has always been a staple of My Little Pony. Spe- uh, granted, they're not on the Friendship Express, but I guess a, a boat is a secondary uh, compensation for that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's true, yeah. And it's, it is true that we know something has to happen on this boat otherwise it's going to be a really boring special but then rainbow wishing for misfortune to alleviate her boredom that's not very heroic you know, she's she's proclaiming herself a superhero without actually having the superhero spirit i mean you ever think superman is like boy i sure hope a plane falls out of the sky or an alien invades today i'm kind of bored Laser, I mean, <laughs> laser, laser beams clean. Oh no, the plane is falling out. I should help it. <laughs> I mean, you. Could, that sounds more like. Yeah, I mean, that you, sounds more like Homelander. <laughs> I mean, you could basically compare it to most of the Marvel and DC comics today. No comment. <laughs> oh boy, but yeah. Although I never yeah. heard of an all-you-can-eat dessert buffet, and I know that'd be terrible for me. <laughs> Oh no, that would be awesome, yo! Like, just imagine um, them giving you little cakes so you can eat and like keep eating and fondues and whatnot. Like, oh wow! Yeah, pretty soon the fondues become fondants. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, but I do remember there's a French fry buffet where the fries are unlimited. Uh, it's just the dipping sauce and whatnot. Where is the specialty? I don't remember. I think it's in Korea. But eh, that, that, that's one of those fun facts things. But anyway, um, let's carry on. And I'm going to Tobo charge with the uh, whole uh, scene. So we see that Fluttisha is in the petting zoo. Uh, she's having a good time petting with the uh, animals. And she talks to a bunny who has grandkids. And the bunny looks young. And also it makes sense because bunnies do procreate a lot. So that makes sense. They're breeding like Catholic rabbits. <laughs> Wait, what? Why are they, what's Catholic the difference between being Catholic? 
Oh, well, if, if you must know, we can rely on the, the songs of Monty Python. Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is good. Mm, yes, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> but what, you guys don't remember the Avengers and that quote? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, there you go. Catholic rabbits. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 Brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, they got religion. <laughs> I miss this a lot. Anywho. Um, Rainbow Dash comes in saying that the bunny might be an evil bunny who eats evil carrots and does evil things. And all the animals go into hiding. And Fletisha is just whispering under her breath, wishing Rainbow Dash would be dead right about now. You just imagine this version of Fluttershy having her own Discord. Boy. I mean, I'm just... Anyway. Kill the rainbow one. Tara, <laughs> uh, you're saying... I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just more concerned about uh, the sanitary in that room. I mean, yeah, you know, it's a petting zoo. You want to have a petting zoo, but I'm pretty sure it's going to stink in there with all those animals in that one room. We don't... We don't take kindly to logic in this here part of town. <laughs> Actually, I, I I'm just going to do a quick search. <laughs> Cruise petting does zoo. Does not exist. I have a strong feeling that does not exist. Do they exist, Silver? Please tell me they won't. What the? Give, give me a minute to Google, man. <laughs> okay, while you Google, I'll carry Are you implying that he's slow? No, I... Anywho, carrying on. We see Applejack struggling to not upchuck her, whatever she still has in her. And Rainbow Dash goes in saying, Rainbow Dash, what happened to you? Did the evil take your voice? Did the evil squid lady take your voice so you can't talk and whatnot? And Rainbow Dash here kind of upchucks overboard, which is good. And kind of gives Rainbow Dash the stink eye and Rainbow Dash moves away and <clears throat> Rainbow Dash keeps asking people and she asks have you guys seen any bad magic and uh, oh man I'm forgetting his name Vincent Tong here uh, points to the door and we reveal that there's a new, there's a bad magic going on, and it's just Trixie, uh, Trixie doing her show and whatnot, and Trixie says that yeah, whenever I do magic, um, some bozo here thinks they can do better than me and whatnot, and this gives Rainbow Dash the idea of, huh, I should do magic so evil will come, ha ha, this is a genius idea. And she wanders off. Uh, Silver. By the way, I, I have checked, and while they, uh, while they do have cruises with specific destinations where you can pet animals, there is no on-the-boat petting zoo that I can find. Uh, because that would be strange. Could you just imagine having a quote-unquote petting zoo and all the animals are seasick? Well, to be honest, I'm thinking of Life of Pi right now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about Noah's Ark. Oh man! Yeah, which is which is the greater religious experience? You, the viewers, decide. Also, if you watch that Family Guy um, cutaway gag, <laughs> that that would be strange. Which? Oh yes, that one and only cutaway gag. <laughs> the one where um, a penguin and a something, you know, remember that one? Walk into a bar. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I'm sure our, people, our audience would be smart enough to Google it. Anywho, we, we join Rarity who buys a lot of stuff, goes shopping, and it's all for under $10, which is impressive because she is a frugal spender. And the clerk uh, flips a coin to her and she misses. And uh, one of the crew workers... Uh, picks up the coin and hands it over to her and <laughs> he l oddly looks a lot like Applejack and 
I'm guessing this is where people have a problem with her? Oh, sorry, him? Mm, I can't say I have a problem with him. I, if anything, I find it kind of funny. It's like, oh, were you complaining about same-sex relationships in our last special? Well, joke's on you. We'll just make a male Applejack. <laughs> Who is... And he's British. Oh, no. A cockney, cockney accent. Yeah, a cockney, actually. But yeah, oh, wow. Um, yeah, wow. Knowing what I know now, and also just feeling the general audience about this guy, he is... Dumber than a box of bricks. Mm, yeah, like, yeah. He, he is just... Mm. I, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to focus on this guy for a bit. Uh, his name is Ragamuffin. He is a... Uh, I don't know. He just works on the ship. Uh, helping hand and whatnot. Carrying stuff. and I don't know what his job title is. But... He only looks like Applejack and talks in a Cockney accent. So, yeah. Um, I'm Cockney. I'm uncultured. Uh, mm. Actually. I'm quoting Helsinger Bridge. Also, talking about talking in Cockney is actually not easy. They, they have codes. Like, a linguistic breakdown I saw was like, oof. It was... It was not easy. <laughs> but... Yeah, uh, th this guy here, um, I think I asked everybody about him, but uh, anybody wants to add more to this guy before I carry on? I got nothing. I got nothing, I got nothing either. All right, Silva? He exists. <laughs> he exists. Just, just right. for the special, and then we never see him or hear from him again. Ah, yes. All right. <clears throat> Although we do get to see his pony self in the comics. Ah. Ooh. Very briefly. Mm, all right. So, anywho, we joined back with the girls on stage doing practice, I guess, setting up their equipments and whatnot. And we see that uh, every, uh, Twilight's asking, So, girls, how are you enjoying your time? Uh, are you enjoying the hard work and effort that I put in? Because I did a lot of hard work and effort into planning this vacation for us. I hope you enjoy it. And all of the girls, Pinkie Pie says no, because Rainbow Dash got me banned from the buffet. And Fluttershy also says, like, Rainbow Dash was so aggressive that she scared all the animals into hiding. And now it's not a pet thing, zoo. It's just a zoo. Oh. And Applejack is just seasick, so yeah. <coughs> And Twilight is like, oh no, this this sucks. Like, oh god, no, this, this sucks. I I, I don't I, I know. And we see Rainbow Dash comes in saying that, yo, girls, I have a plan. And you know what? We should uh, power up when we perform the concert to do some cool lighting effects and whatnot. And I, I think this is the part where Sunset just chews... Uh, Rainbow out saying that Rainbow uh, Twilight really worked hard to make this vacation happen for everyone and you just kind of make it suck like could you just tone it out a bit and Rainbow Dash feelings were hurt but at the same time too she said that she could handle it so I guess not <clears throat> and we see Rarity comes in with Ragabuff from behind tagging along and it is revealed, uh, Ragamuffin's there, and we see a side-by-side -side image of her and uh, him and Applejack. And, yep, they look similar. Haha, <laughs> haha, that's a joke. And the girl's like, wait, what? Uh, am I? Hmm, okay, uh, that's interesting. All right, okay, yeah, uh, did that happen? And they play it off as a... And they don't really point out that Ragamuffin looks like Applejack. Did they? Because I, I I try to remember, but I don't hear them saying saying it. I don't remember them. No one ever really says it directly, mm -hmm. as far as I know. I, I rewatched it, and they don't say it, but I think it's implied. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, they they all. 
get ready and they all kind of agree okay we'll do whatever we'll power up when the show starts and we see the stagehand putting up the speakers and whatnot and the girls perform it's a really awesome song uh rainbow dash sorry um applejack trying not to humiliate herself on stage and the what you call this the audience are really feeling it and uh, rainbow dash gives um the girls like okay should we should we power up should we power up should we power up and uh, they they relent and okay they power up and then suddenly the stage light and the power gets cut oh no this is bad whatever should they do also at the same time too uh sunset wings at vincent and he goes gaga for her <coughs> flash that's his what? name F- flash ah! <laughs> yeah. steal the hair of the waifus <laughs> sorry um jacob you're saying something i i was just wanted up on silver <laughs> <laughs> Right. So yeah, um So we we were of the same mind. I I'm going to pause here. So yeah, um what do you think so far, uh, Terra? Uh I at least it's like, you know, it's fi- there's finally something happening like instead of just Rainbow Dash constantly messing up people's uh vacation, which you still kind of get that, but it's like, you know, at least something else is happening and they're not sticking to one plot because if they did, might as well have just made it an episode instead of like a full-on short. <laughs> Mm. How do I put this? The way we're the way we watch this is a forty four minute long special, but the way that they did this is in parts. So technically, what I just described was just part f- part two of four. So yeah, this is the time where they were uploading stuff to YouTube, right, Silver, or was it? Uploading to uh, the Discovery Channel. I'm pretty sure that it was on the Discovery Channel. The full thing or the parts? The whole thing. Ah, the part was later on, right? I think so, yes. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> but still, I, I just can't... In, in my mind, when Flash goes gaga over Sunset, I'm thinking... Wait, didn't you get over her? What, you're into her now? Are you some kind of fanboy? Well, I mean, he got over Psy Twilight not being Equestria's Twilight. And apparently, uh, Flash Sentry just really likes transformed ponies. Hmm, Something awakened in him then. So he immediately went from one crush to another, which really I don't think is a healthy way to go. You got to take some time for yourself. But truth is, Flash has really doesn't have much of a character uh, from this point onward. Yeah. He's just there to go gaga over uh, Sunset. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and it's... Even though I think he, he should focus his efforts on Derpy. Because she's the one who's always there to pat him on the shoulder. Oh, that is, I I totally agree with that. Also, at the same time, too, like poor Flash, like he he came out. He how I put this? I I know this episode doesn't have anything to do with Flash, but this is going to be one of those rare opportunities where we get to talk about Equestria struggles. And God dang it, I'm going to talk about Flash. <laughs> and uh, one one of the things is that. Poor Flash, man. Like, he stood up to a manipulator and bully and uh, went his own ways. And he uh, fell in love with uh, Equestria, Twilight, and whatnot. And I I won't say pure love, probably uh, an interest in her. And then, as time goes on, we get to see him degrading into... Me, boy, me, like girl. Ooh, girl, wink at me. I go goo goo gaga. <clears throat> Anywho. Yeah, that's, but, a, that's about right. Yeah. I think that's a fair summary. Yeah, but it's, 
it's like he his character degraded, man. Like, come on, give him. Well, would we say it's been flanderized? Yeah. I guess. Like, they they dumb him down just so that they can make a joke. At the same time, too. Like, he he is capable. I feel like he is. Right. Well, in this well in this case, I guess he's no better off than than his uh, pony counterpart in Equestria. I. Um, I, I don't know, man. I mean, he's doing something. But at the same time, too, he's a guard. And guards don't get... Uh, guards don't get the respect they need. Oh, God, no. Anyway, <laughs> let's, let's move on. I, I feel like Bulk here is much better. <clears throat> Anyhow. Um, the girls... Um, try not to panic because it's dark and whatnot. And... Rainbow Dash here says, Oh, it's evil magic. It's evil equestrian magic. I know it. Ah! And she says, Who wants to follow me to find said evil magic? And nobody said, Nobody's going to. Nobody. Twilight, on the other hand, says, You know, I'm, I'm going to go below deck and try to troubleshoot the engine. See what, what I can do. And at this point here, this is where Silver's mentioning of, Ah, huh, it feels like the ship wants this to go bad. Hmm. It's for the insurance money. <laughs> well, isn't this the part where Twilight starts trying to fix fix the engine? Yep. Yes. It is. And and technically she knows what she's doing because she read the three she read the six hundred plus page manual on it. But they're supposed to be a frickin' engineer on the ship. He, this is why they were able to get it on the cheap cheap. He, he couldn't handle it, Silver. Uh, I think he he knew the, what, ship couldn't take it? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to put a Scottish accent. I cannot do it, Captain. You're roping the warp engines. Uh, seeing this scene... Uh, uh, that's more Russian. I was saying, after seeing the scene with Twilight being like, have you even read the manual? It's like, you know, now you understand why people started freaking out and screaming when Rainbow Dash said it's about to go down. Yeah, yeah I mean... Yeah, she, she's an idiot. She's an idiot. Uh, talking about idiots, we see Pinkie Pie here uh, in the kitchen trying to get to the bun cake and she's doing it stealthily which is good which is good and we, we'll get to her progress soon enough uh, we see rarity going below deck and seeing ragamuffin doing uh river dancing tap dancing Whoa. uh huh yeah so he's doing that and rarity falls for her oh wow a person that could dance and whatnot oh yay Falls for him. I mean, I know he's still just a Rule 63 Applejack. <laughs> Sorry. Any hook. But. Falls for him? I don't know. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, falls for him. It, it's one of those things where. Confused. Anywho, uh, we see Rainbow Dash moping and seeing there's a bunch of lightning and th thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening. And he's, she sees in the pool. She says ocean, but it's just the pool, right? I think that's the ocean. Uh, no, but it is the ocean. So she's looking <coughs> out into the ocean then. Yeah. She's looking out into the ocean from the pool deck. Pool deck. Oh, okay, because uh, to me, like, the thing right now she's looking at is like, she's looking at the pool. But uh, that, that could be me. I don't know. So anywho, she... No, a funny, funny enough, uh, the top, an open pool on a ship is called the Lido. Lido. So it's like, it's it's funny because there's no lid, but it's a Lido deck. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. Okay. False start there. <laughs> oh, you 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 need our button silver. Never. <laughs> so anywho. Uh, Rainbow Dash seeing the symbol, uh, some kind of symbol in the water, and says, "Oh yes, this is this is good. We 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 see this is good. I I can go to action." 
and she dashes off uh, grabbing all her friends. So um, the symbol is kind of a lightning shape and if you watch the movie you know what this is. So anywho, uh, in order of kidnapping, uh, Twilight is about to plug in uh, something that would make the engines or the ship work properly but Rainbow Dash grabs her and makes it even worse. Pinkie Pie, who distracted the chef and almost about to eat the cake, got distracted, got, got pulled away and now she's bent for life. Rarity about to um, put the moves on Ragamuffin and going in for the kiss before she got dragged away by Rainbow Dash. I think this is a blessing for her because uh, I don't think Ragamuffin is the right person for him, for her. Anywho, <clears throat> uh, we, we get everyone gathered together and Rainbow Dash trying to show them the symbol that she saw in the pool or water and uh, not being there. And everybody says, Rainbow, this is just normal and you're, you're kind of overreacting and you're kind of ruining our fun. Please calm down and whatnot. And she says, like, oh, I'll prove it to you guys. There's evil over there. I'll go there and I'll take it out myself. And, to, and at the same time, too, Twilight's been just saying that there, we're, we're not heroes. We're just normal girls trying to have a normal fun time and whatnot. Granted, we do save the world on occasions, but we're not superheroes. <clears throat> And I don't, I'm guessing the next day, uh, which is breakfast, we see the girls trying to have a meal and Twilight just saying uh, she feels bad because of what she said to Rainbow Dash and uh, she and Sunset goes to try and find her and seeing that, oh, um, one of the lifeboats is gone. Oh no, she uh, she went to the pool or she went to the island or whatever she location she was going. Uh, so Sunset and Twilight hop on a lifeboat with some kids ready and heads off to the island to try and save Rainbow Dash. Uh, when they arrive, they see Rainbow Dash's boat and there's a talking parrot who mimics whatever people say which I'm not 100% sure because that bird is kind of smart so the bird says that Rainbow Dash went into the woods and hijinks ensue when every bad thing happens could happen to Twilight does happen to Twilight and uh, once they emerge to a clearing they see Rainbow Dash stuck in some what you call this quicksand and ask for help from the girl and she she just knowing that uh how big of a jerk she has been and she feels guilty and sorry for what she's done and before the girls could save her a uh, big giant planet attack wait what where did that came from so Twilight uses her power, telekinesis, or no telekinesis, yeah, uh, to hold the plant monster at bay while Sunset tries to save Rainbow Dash with a stick. And that doesn't seem to work. And she sees that, oh wow, uh, there's something going on with this uh, quicksand. And seizing the opportunity, telling. Rainbow Dash, do you trust me? And Rainbow Dash says yes. Dunks her head into the quicksand. And with that episode over. Welcome to Equestria Girls Snuff Film Edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. But no, but in all seriousness, um, there's some kind of equestrian magic and she knows what this is because she's dealt with it before and technically is a portal to Equestria. And that's kind of major. 
and I'm gonna pause here. So, Jed Silver, what do you think so far? Well, I mean, Rainbow is setting a whole new standard of irresponsibility. Now, I'm thinking of uh, older stories like Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, where kids seem to find more than the uh, adults. But this is taking that to a whole other level where the ship's crew are completely unreliable in a crisis. But then there's the scene where... And, but. And that feels very unrealistic. It feels like you're making the world dumber to make your characters look good. But then there's Pinky doing her sneaking, and we're about to get sort of a freedom of cartoon expression in the pony world that I wish could be a part of the Equestria Girls world. They're making it, in a weird way, too rigid, too stiff. Oh, uh, what do you mean by that? Too not magical. Well, I mean, I'd have to jump ahead to where they're the ponified Twilight, Sunset, and Rainbow are sneaking through Ponyville. Ah, uh, all right. But, yeah, and Rainbow, highly irresponsible to go off on her own. But, yes, this almost looks like a snuff film. But it's like, Twi Twilight, you use your uh, telekinesis to fend off the plant monster and not lift Rainbow Dash out of the hole or the quicksand. I will do that with my stick. <laughs> my powers of empathy are really helpful. Mm -hmm. and, you, you, and to be honest, right? She's like, the... Okay, if we break down what they could have done, A, it's Twilight used um, tele uh, pow her power of um, telepathy to lift Rainbow Dash up. That, that's one or two sunset could have just powered up and fly to get rainbow out she could have done that we see her do it in the episode but no I, I, i'm guessing no she has a stick <laughs> she has a stick and it's a good stick but yeah uh, boy <clears throat> so anywho um Although, I just realized something. Yeah. This is taking part in the next day. Mm -hmm. At the start. And this is uh, a stick. You know what that makes what? it? Sunset Shimmers Morning Wood. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it was a Twilight stick. <laughs> Yeah, it was Twilight. Ooh, well then she gave, well then Twilight gave Sunset her morning wood. Oh my. Norman, you're setting all this up for him. I know, I know, and I'm glad I'm doing it. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you say that now, but wait until everyone's like, that's highly inappropriate for a children's show. We see it as it is, my friends. <clears throat> Uh, what about you, Jacob? What do you think? So far. Well, uh, half, uh, half the episode marked finally passing, finally getting something that's happening. Well, uh, I, I, I don't know if there's anything more that I can add that uh, Silver or you haven't said already. But there is something. The plant monster. The one that started the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It just disappears after that. It's never it never shows up again. Uh, mm, mm, kind of, but at the same time too, nobody. Mm, how do I put it? Feed me Seymour. <laughs> Feed me all night long. But but to be honest, we we didn't really see the other batch of. Uh, you know what? I I I know what you mean, but I have rebuttals, and I'm gonna save that when we. Reach the end. I hope you can remember that. Anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? I'm just. I honestly have no words. Like we just go along with the ride, and sh like you yeah, understand, you know, Rainbow Dash is supposed to be loyal. But another thing too is her friends are kind of. Uh, what's what's the polite way of saying this? Um, rude about it. <laughs> But you do get some nice comedy out of it, like when uh, Rainbow Dash is like, where's the sign? And Tari is like, you know who's the most powerful sorcerer? Mother Nature. <laughs> mm, true. 
No, but at the same time too, like I I understand, but uh, how I put it, it's like her friends are, just want to relax. Uh, they 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 have a long day of busting monsters and whatnot, and they just want to kind of have a normal vacation. Come on, the last time when we go uh, to uh, the last time when we wanted to do some kind of um. Exhibition. It became some kind of battle of the band where three uh, magical girls came down and kind of made us fight. And then when we did a sporting event, one of our friends here became a monster or kind of demon, a very hot demon. And then when we went to camp, the camp counselor became a very hot camp counselor demon thingy. <laughs> and then like when we were going to what? Uh, to the fair or to the amusement park we were almost crushed in a building a white building white room I don't know so we just want to relax and I can't blame their friends Rainbow this is just a bit of an adrenaline junkie you know what I mean yeah <laughs> she should talk with Cadence <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh, they'll get along so well. <coughs> Anywho, I'm going to carry on. So, the girls go go to the other side and it is revealed that there are ponies. And, oh boy, I, I just love seeing Sunset getting back into her element and using her horn automatically. Like, oh, uh, I haven't done this for a long time, but I, I remember how to do it. And seeing Saitwai freaked out. Oh, no! Rainbow Dash trying to fly but not knowing how to do it properly and uh, funny enough Sunset knows where they are and heads to Ponyville that's interesting so while the three of them uh, get acclimated to their bodies and have a good time we see in the human world that things are not looking great because uh, the Thunderbolt and Lightning are just smashing onto the ship. Applejack is trying to do her best to fix the ship because she has experience fixing a truck. Silver, what did you mention earlier before? <laughs> Was that there's no engineer on this ship? It, and therefore it's a floating death trap? Yes! <laughs> oh boy. What is this, the ghost ship? <laughs> It it soon will be. <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, um while this is happening, we see the symbol again in the sky who's just smashing the ship with thunder thunderous roars. Uh the girls kind of say uh no no they just get bombarded by lightning and we go back to Equestria with the uh, we arrive in Ponyville and we see the girls uh, stealthily sneaking their way to Twilight's castle. Uh, Silver, you want to mention something, right? Yes, I wanted to mention the sort of cartoonish uh, sneaking on display here compared to Pinky sneaking, trying to get back at that bunt cake. Mm. You see them duck behind one wall and then suddenly magically they're on top of a bridge. Or... Uh, they hide in, they duck when the regular Rainbow Dash nearly sees them and hide in the cart behind Applejack, even though it's physically impossible for them to fit in that. It's far more cartoonish and having fun with the environment. And I, kind of, I wish that Pinky could have done that on the ship. Let her be her full cartoonish Pinky sense. It makes no sense, but... Just trust it. Yeah, I, 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 style. I understand. And this is what... Uh, didn't they make a special about it when uh, they sneak into Crystal Prep? Was it? Well, there was a ninja thing, but even then she wasn't really being as sneaky as Pinky could be in Equestria, mm. which is more of a high sneaky level. Uh, yeah, yeah. As opposed to Izzy's mid-sneaky. Yeah, I agree with you. That, like... When it comes to Pinky, you shouldn't really question her. Yeah, you just shouldn't really question her. But 
doing them like, <coughs> taking advantage of that is kind of a bummer, you know? Like, just let her do unexplainable stuff and just say, it's just pinky. You don't question it. Oh boy. So, anywho, <coughs> carrying on, um, we see them sneaking throughout Ponyville and arriving at Twilight's castle. Um, they, um, Twilight's son, sorry. Sunset uh, says hi to Twilight, they hug, and Twilight just asks, wait, what, uh, how are you, how, how did you enter through the doorway instead of the mirror in the room, like, wait, what, I, uh, how, how is this going on, I, I, I don't understand, and she reveals that, hey, we found another portal, hey, and we see that, um, Saitwai and Rainbow Dash are here and they have a good time and Sunset just says uh, we got time we no, no no reason to hurry back I mean it's not like our friends are in danger at sea almost dying from a non-moving ship and also some kind of thunderstorm going on I mean that's, that's, not, that's ridiculous that's not happening uh, we cut away to them trying to survive not getting hit by thunder and lightning and Rain, uh, Applejack somehow managed to make the move ship you remember Speed 2? Cruise Control? Yeah, remember that movie? I know of it I never saw it uh, Yeah, it's that but if it's done by kids and there's no risk to it well technically there's a risk but you know what I mean so, yeah, um, I'm sure they'll be fine, right? I'm sure the girls will be fine. There's, there's, there's nothing bad that's going to happen, right? Right. Anyway, let's head back to Equestria. I see, I feel like there's better stories over there. And over in Equestria, Spike tells a joke. And that's the last time I ever went to a dragon wedding. <laughs> I got no idea what you just say. Now everybody left just to make the poor guy feel like he's special. So, um, the, Twilight is just like, oh, this is fun. Uh, you guys should really try uh, Mrs. Cake's uh, Cupcake Fondue. It's to die for. and But it takes 20 minutes or so. I mean, like it's pretty long. Saitoi just says, yeah, we have all the time in the world. <laughs> and next scene is Pinkie Pie panicking because we're running out of time because they're gonna die. <laughs> Ain't that fun? So I'm just gonna skip over this because it's a lot of fun seeing the back and forth between situations where in Ponyville things are calm while on the boat things are going south real fast. So uh, Twilight here tells them uh, or shows them all about the uh, what you call this artifact that she had and whatnot and one of the artifacts is uh, the time when there was this evil bad guy who kind of came to town uh, kind of petrify the three princesses and I had to go on an adventure out of town to gather our allies to kind of save the world and whatnot and, but I learned a valuable lesson and we also met this one hot chick but I don't know where she is now and also we got this stick with a diamond on it and Twilight unwraps it uh, shows it to everyone everyone's impressed but Rainbow Dash just sees that hey I've seen this logo before and this is not good and Twilight just says oh uh, you've seen this logo before uh, wh wh where was it and she explains that uh, she saw it in her world it was and, and Twilight just breaks down was there thunderbolt and lightning and was it very very frightening and Twilight uh, says <laughs> Galileo 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 <laughs> And Rainbow Dash says, yeah, 
And Twilight just says, Ah, I see! It seems that we have not gathered all the Storm King's power! Great! Ay, ay, ay! The ponies here, or the girls, um, have to go back and save their friends. <clears throat> so, on in the next scene, we see, well, the ship's kind of going down, sinking. And we see them trying to survive. Uh, Pinkie Pie screams, let's get to the lifeboat. And her saying that all the lifeboat gets struck by lightning and it all just, what you call this, um, gets destroyed and sinks into the ocean. And uh, the girl panics and sees, oh no, uh, what, what is this? This is, this is not great. Uh, we see the Storm King symbol in the sky and the girls manage to get to the world, uh, get to the human world before things get even worse. Uh, pulls out the stick, uses their power to absorb the Storm King's energy into the stick and save the world. Yay! So they banter, they say their stories and whatnot. And uh, they learn a valuable lesson. And Parrot Chan says, You idiots, the ship is sinking! Go save your friends! And they do. Uh, they group up, they power up, and they save the day. Uh, everybody got their assignments and whatnot, and we see their heroic moments uh, from Rainbow Dash saving a bunny who was trapped under dirt. Yeah, that was heavy dirt. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. I know. Also, we see uh, a kid alone crying and Sunset uh, goes to read her mind to see what happened. And, oh, I see what happened. And she flew. Uh, she, she picks up the girl and she flew to where her mother is and yay she, she kind of helps the girl yay, awesomeness sorry uh sunset why couldn't you did this before when uh, rainbow dash was kind of drowning in quicksand oh uh, you need to power up oh okay okay then we see applejack uh calling if is anyone in their rooms because uh, that would be a terrible way to die uh, she sees uh, somebody calling for help. She rips the door open. And her, her gimmicks is strength, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So she rips open the door, saves a few people, and we see the chef stuck in her uh, kitchen or dining area. Uh, her food is stuck and she couldn't move. So Pinkie Pie comes in to save her and tries to pull her out but couldn't because her leg is stuck and it is revealed that her leg is stuck in a bunt cake a bunt cake yep uh, silver uh, is this is I, I know I'm watching a cartoon right and yeah. my suspicion of disbelief is kind of at the door, right? Maybe. So, how difficult it is to pull your leg from this situation? Hmm. Depends on the ingredients and how sticky they are. And how they interact with salt water. At the same time, too, it's just food and you can't pull your leg. I mean, at this point here, right? Like, let's go extreme. Oh no, I'm drowning. Either I... Drown here with the ship, or I cut my leg off. Pick one, right? And how did, how did her leg get stuck there in the first place? Mm, you really don't want to know what she's into. <laughs> God no. Anyway, Pinky, I'm just a bit disgusted that. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just a bit disgusted that she actually ate that underwater. It's like, that probably didn't taste well. 
I probably had a lot of salt. <laughs> Oh man, she, she's salty. I guess she then. Could, yeah, I was gonna say that's probably very salty of her. <laughs> or maybe Pinky actually ate the ankle off the chef. Oh, that would be dark. <laughs> I'll save you by severing your limb. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh. mm -hmm. uh, so, anywho, um, everybody gets on. A life raft that Rarity made with her crystal powers. Uh, Twilight uses her levitation to lift everybody and put them into the life raft. And Rainbow Dash pushes the boat to safety. And they go to the island where the, what you call this? Uh, the mirror pool was, or the port of the equestria was. So they, they kind of uh, rest for a bit and Rare. Rarity and Regamuffin say so goodbye and uh, parts ways. And it is revealed that Regamuffin here has been acting the whole time. Wait, what? I, I did not see that coming. Oh no! Oh no! But that's okay. Applejack's there to catch her on the rebound. I'm, t I'm just feeling like this is kind of one of those uh, some of things where both party agree to this, where if you meet anybody on this vacation, you can go for it, kind of deal. You know what I mean? One of those open relationship things. I've heard of them. Have you heard of them? Mostly in song. Oh, well, oh, well, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but anywho, um, the... Girls say, "All right, um, we're safe for now. But what do we do? How how do we get back to civilization? How do we get back to Candlelock, and whatnot? Because um, none of them think about bringing a radio with them or some kind of way to call for help." Hey, Silvo, did you mention something about the ship? <laughs> yeah, that it should have emergency equipment for this very situation. <laughs> I know, man. They got it on the cheap. They got the cheap cheese. I mean, the, the, they, this cuts cost by cutting the passengers' lives short. I mean, they, 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 they did sign the waiver. That's why they got it cheap. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right. We're, we're, we're close to the end. So, anyway, uh, we see. Sunset saying, I got an idea. Looking at the magical stick with a dying, uh, crystal on it. And we see them barging into Twilight's castle with a bunch of new faces and or familiar faces. And saying, hey, Twilight, um, can we, we need help. <laughs> and uh, we see a bunch of um, reuse assets. We, we, see, we see Applejack with her hat. Which is surprising because on the boat she didn't wear one. We see Flash, we see Bulk, we see Derpy! Because I, did, I didn't see Derpy on the ship in human form. Did you guys see her? Yes. Yes. Really? It's when uh, Rainbow Dash asks if there's any bad magic around. Really? Oh, uh, I did not notice that. Um, and also, I'm trying to speed up. Uh, yeah, and... Hijinks is you! Yay! And episode ends. So, um... <clears throat> let's go for f um, final thoughts. And Silver, what do you think? Mind if I go in first? Oh, sure. Go ahead, man. Okay, let's rewind the uh, time a little back. Uh, first things first. Apparently, when the ship cra uh, crashed into the rocks, it ripped, uh, tripped the front of the ship open. And yet, instead of the ship going the way of Titanic, it went in reverse. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, you mean it ascended into the heavens? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would have been something, anyway. But uh, as for the... Well, this is the rant part. And uh, Norma, I need you to add from the uh, Star Wars Episode 3 the music from the scene in the opera. <clears throat> okay, I'll try. Have you ever heard of the tragedy 
of the Storm King. No, of course you didn't. Because he never had a story. He was just there as a paper thin, thin foil for the protagonist. <laughs> that was a bit late. <laughs> yeah, anyway, seriously, uh, by the time the movie came out, co compared to the potential that uh, he was shown to have during the movie's development process in the concept art, well, it. It, it, just, it just nothing was there, like, we never even heard uh, what species is supposed to be. Now, G4 movie wasn't made by any stretch, uh, at worst it was inoffensive, but this was something that really frustrated me, I mean, when the bad guy is created when he needs to feel... I'm sorry. When you create a bad guy, he needs to feel like he's a real person, I mean, he needs to have motivation and desires that are beyond just, I want power for power's sake. I mean, that's why I think the first and second Kung Fu Panda are superior to the third, because uh, in the third movie the villain just uh, does bad things for the sake of having power. Now, Time Comics uh, did try to flesh out the Storm King uh, even a little bit, but that's still a failure, because you need an outside source to make connection to a movie. But worst of all, and Norman, this is uh, going back to the uh, Patreon uh, bit that you did earlier. Unlike uh, all the movie only cast that couldn't appear in the show because monies, the voice actor for the certain could have easily been replaced, and he could have been made. He could have made a comeback as an antagonist of the series, because remember he was turned to stone and crushed to bits, but his head managed to survive. And he could have been revived as an animated construct, and that would explain why his uh, voice is different compared to that of the movie. And I'm only, always gonna be bitter about uh, about that for that missed opportunity. But anyway, to the special. Uh, this special... Uh, it got my attention because of the stroking, but as I went through it, I realized there was two big inconsistencies here. Oh. The first one was uh, the staff, the staff of Sakanas. In the movie it was broken, which is why it ended up destroying the castle. And even Jeremy Whitley in the Nightmare, Nightmare Nights remembered that and hence it was referenced. So that's both inconsistency and uh, lack of continuity altogether. And the second reason, and this is the bigger one, Storm King's power. Mm -hmm. There is no Storm King's power. I mean, the Storm King used the Staff of Sakanas to drain the magic of uh, all Alicorn princesses uh, of Equestria, and then used that power uh, that was locked in the staff. So when the magic was restored back, that was it. I mean, the staff was just a giant container, the same way that Grogar's Bewitching Bell was. So. How could Storm King uh, have any power that could escape to the human world in the first place? I, I see your point, and I, uh, I I agree, but at the same time too, uh, just to play devil's advocate here, uh, this could be one of those situations where this is an alternate timeline, where the events are similar, but certain things change, where the staff did not break, uh, the Storm King probably did have some power to him, but nothing to the extent that was in the movie. Probably he's just manipulating um, Thunder Lightning, hence Storm King. And since this is what, quote-unquote, Equestria Girls timeline, and like Silver mentioned, they tried to kind of uh, tell their own thing. So I I'm just guessing, or I'm just, yeah, I'm just guessing that Certain aspects of this world is not the same as what happened in the main timeline or the main universe. Yeah, but to anyone who's actually watched the movie, uh, this comes off as especially frustrating. Oh, yeah. I, uh, in, in all honesty, right? In, in all honesty, um, on your point here, it feels like the story of the Storm King should it have happened uh, using the Storm King as a plot device or yeah as a plot device shouldn't have happened like we could have just uh, had a lot of fun if the girls or if somebody just tripped and fell into 
the uh, statue and ended up in Ponyville, that could have its, its own adventure and its own hijinks. That could have been fun. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. So, anything more to add, Chico? Well, uh, as a final thought, um, well, it wasn't awful, but again, it was also frustrating. Probably to, uh, for the same reason that Sula said earlier, that they're trying to reconnect the uh, Equestria to uh, to the uh, to the this side universe, but it's I don't know, it's just not working for me. All right, all right. and Silver, what you mind? Well, I'm kind of wondering how Flash is feeling. It's like, wait, there are two Twilights, and one of them gives me vibes of the one I like. Oh, but she's a horse. What is this strange feeling? No. Stop it, me. Stop it, me. It's a family friendly show. I mean, Ragamuffin is, is faking an accent, and... Well, you know, he walks off, but then doesn't he have to stay with the group for the pony experience? Or is he still stuck away here on Ragamuffin's Isle, the spinoff? He's so stupid, he walked away from the group and never got off. Uh, <laughs> now, this is a tale of a castaway. I, I want to say I want to play Devil's Advocate for this one, but I don't really care. <laughs> So, yeah. And so, I mean, we come to an end. It is funny that while there is an antagonistic force, there is no consciousness behind it. There is no desire. It's just rampaging magic, and, which is rather quickly dealt with. Yeah, honestly, that's true. You, you could say that it's a force of nature, but at the same time, too, it, it's not. So, yeah. Well, honestly, I feel like Rainbow Dash is the actual antagonist of much of this uh, special. I, I could agree with that because, in, in all honesty, right, one way or another, the Storm King's leak power was still going to happen, even if they, they did stuff or not. And somehow, Sunset, sorry, uh, Rainbow Dash being the quote unquote antagonist for the first half of the special was kind of. I wouldn't say force, but was kind of a not nice move. Like, she could have just relaxed. She could have just uh, kicked her legs up and just enjoy the sun and whatnot. And then uh, things happen on its own. I, I feel like this could have been a interesting mystery episode. Similar to... I won't say mud. What was it though? Um, mud. No, that train episode. There's a lot of train episodes. Mystery on the Friendship yeah, Express. Mystery on the Friendship Express. Yes, I, I was thinking Murder on the Orient Express. <laughs> uh, that, that's another uh, story. But yes, I, uh, this could have been something similar to that, where uh, things happen. Uh, certain, certain mysterious things happen. Like a blown fuse or static electricity happening. I mean, like they're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, is it because of Rainbow Dash? Because she, you know, if you want to use Rainbow Dash as the uh, antagonist or pro uh, yeah, antagonist for this one, you could just say, "Oh, Rainbow Dash, you run too fast. That's why things happen. You're you're dealing static electricity. Oh no, stop that." <coughs> that could have been very interesting. <coughs> Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Well, we got this, and what we got was pretty okay. As you say, but there's not much else I can really contribute to this. I just now want to see a Ragamuffin's Isle spinoff. And what? Uh, he and the ship crew, because the... Uh, the Isle... The, what, what was the ship called? Um, the... Lux Deluxe, they don't want to take responsibility for them? Exactly. Yay, insurance fraud. <laughs> All right. We're rich, everyone. <laughs> Yay, but we're trapped on an island. Boo. Oh, they're not rich, Silver. It's the people in charge that are rich. <laughs> oh, yes, our plan succeed. 
Oh, anywho, Tara, what about you, my friend? <laughs> I don't know why one that gets a crack out of me. <laughs> so, I, for me, it was decent. I mean, it just opens up so many things. It's like, you know, okay, so they found another portal into a quest here. It's like, well, how many portals are there now? And how many times are they going to be visiting? And, you know, how do they sneak through town with all that whole crowd? It's like so many things open. And in the end, too, when they get off the boat, you see that they have a cow and a pig in a petting zoo, too. It's like, you know, what? <laughs> I, I agree with that one. I mean, there's a lot of what. And could you just imagine the cow going through the portal and becoming a minotaur? Well, that would be bovine. <laughs> give me a second, give me a second. Yay! <laughs> I miss this a lot. <sighs> Sounds like you're about to end the last breath, oh, though. Yeah, it's been a while. But hey. Norman's laughing. Yay! But now he's dead. Boo. But we get his insurance money. Yay! But, but you're going to get taxed. <laughs> Boo. Boo. And all the currency are in ringgit, so it's not good. Oh. <laughs> you get pennies. <laughs> um, but anything more to add, Terra? just that this whole show was meh it's like you knew where it was kind of going and then so many things you question that make you say what and you know, it was meh to me yeah and uh you pointing out that oh there's a portal to request all over the place yeah. uh are they going to capitalize on that no yeah. they're, they're, they're... could you just imagine a spin-off show where them trying to find portals to Equestria in certain locations and trying to map them out and trying to kind of stop people from jumping in or falling into it. Like, that could... That 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 story idea could be really awesome. But no. No. I, I, I do understand why, but... Hmm. <sighs> so, anywho. Um, as for me, I felt that this episode was... Or, sorry, this special was kind of fun i like the overarching story i i love the part where uh sunset managed to go back to equestria and have a bit of fun there and just introduce her friends to that world it's it, it's a nice thing to see like just get them uh or j just get to see that aspect of um the character you know and well overall i mean it was just a fun watch but there were so many things bugging me from rainbow dash's attitude to just the way that she was bugging people for just bugging people like oh uh let's do this let's uh let's be heroes let's let's try and do stuff to stupid things like the bun cake that still bugs me like how hard is that cake? It, and it, 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 when when it hits salt water, does it become rock? So it's hard for you to move your leg. Then you see Pinkie Pie eating it. Like nothing makes sense. Uh, so yeah. Oh boy. Um. That's that's done. I guess. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh man. Um. Just give me a second to open stuff. Oh boy, this episode, this special has got me flustered. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> so anywho, let's wrap things up. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dbshowgmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at DBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt, YouTube, and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. I also now have a secondary channel called Weekday Puns, which features weekday puns. And, uh, well, let's see, there are links to my Patreon and Kofi on my YouTube page, where you can support my After the Fact channel. And I'll be seeing folks at Winnie City at the start of June. Ooh, that would be two weeks from now? Just about. Awesome, Winnie City. That would be 
San Francisco? No, uh, Seattle, right? Chicago. Oh, Chicago. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, Jacob, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt under the username Jakafon Torkad, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in the reading story uh, Thermal Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading another journal story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome. Tara, where can good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on DVR, YouTube, or Twitter under the name Torterra1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, it's been a while, man. We, we, we miss you. <laughs> well, I was always glad to be here. Yay. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BelieveLive.com. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm Jacob. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Bye. A show about the girls just going on spring break would have just been awesome on itself. But no, we had to include ship, storm, and otherworldly threats. Nah. Although I, I do have a. And the greatest threat of all. One question too. Is their music <laughs> video. I say one question too is how would things be if you were to say about this to a German when you'd be like we're sinking we're sinking and they'd be like what are you thinking about? <laughs> 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 <laughs>